Well, Kate, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, perhaps we could start off um, because uh, many people watching today probably wouldn't have heard of Refinery29, or if they have, um, don't really know it in great depth. So perhaps you can give us a little uh, overview of uh, who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and thank you so much. Um, it's a real, uh, real honour to, to, to uh, be part of this programme. Refinery29 is a media company um, for women. Uh, we talk to an audience um, of over 500 million women a month across all of our channels globally. Um, we connect with women by telling stories that matter most to them. Uh, everything from style, fashion and beauty content, all the way through to global news, politics, wellness, health, um, and really all of the subjects that interest them in between around their lifestyle, finance, um, fitness, interior decor. So we're really building a really rich ecosystem for young women of content everywhere from Snapchat, where we have a Discover Channel, we're one of the original partners, all the way through to our owned and operated site, an email newsletter, um, and of course Facebook and other social channels. Now we're hearing a lot um, in the press and indeed uh, even in the report for the uh, brands, the top 100 most valuable uh, global brands for this year, about millennial uh, and the impact that millennials are having mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for brands, brand owners and marketing. Um, at least 50% of millennials are women. Um, mm -hmm. Give us a, a feel for what are the issues that are impacting uh, millennial women at the moment. I, I think it's a really interesting term, the term millennial. I think at Refinery we see it more as a mindset. We see it as a set of characteristics that um, bind together a generation, but quite a broad generation. Um, I think we see global connectedness as a real attribute um, of this audience. Um, they're participating in an always-on global content culture. Um, Beyonce announces her pregnancy with one Instagram post, and it's seen by millions in every country in the world. Films are released, albums are released, fashion lines are observed. So really they're participating in global culture and a global news cycle. At the same time, they're more globally conscious than ever. They're participating in wider narratives about politics, about sustainability. So really, it's a global generation. The second is that it's a generation that are really driven by purpose. Um, we've seen this again and again um, in our studies with our audience that this is a generation that are demanding more um, of the world in which they live. 85% of our audience say that they would switch to a brand that aligned better with their values. So this is a purpose-driven generation that are hoping to participate positively in the world in which they live and demanding the same from both the influencers and also from the brands that, that they're consuming and interacting with. I think. But, but it's, not a, it's not a generation that uh, uh, doesn't like marketing, is it? A absolutely not. Or being not. marketed to or being no, communicated with. Absolutely not. And, I, and, I, and I, think, I think that that's one of the kind of common misconceptions about this audience. They actually truly reward um, brands that positively interact with them. Refinery um, has excelled at connecting brands to our influential audience of women, um, particularly young women. We do that by creating compelling content um, with a specific tone of voice and a narrative in, in our environment. Um, we don't see that women don't want to um, consume or interact with content that is uh, funded by or uh, integrates brands. The opposite of that is true. I think a really interesting example um, this year from the US, we, we created a program called the 67% Project. Um, it, it was a program that spoke to how plus size women were represented in the US. 67% of women in the US are above a size 14, yet they're only represented in 2% of, of media. We wanted to change that. We created a whole program that aimed to truly represent women. We did that um, in partnership with uh, Lane Bryant and Airy, putting them absolutely at the heart of that conversation. I think one of the most interesting things we did was partner with Getty. We created a whole new image archive of plus size women and we made that available free so that people could use those images. So there's now no excuse not to have representative images of women. Now our audience absolutely loved that program. It generated 500 million press impressions um, and millions of social interactions. So, so, what, what so that, that's a great example of where a brand leads a conversation that is relevant and impactful to this audience and, and that's what they want to see. Uh, and what are the lessons that brand owners uh, today need to learn in order to be able to communicate successfully to millennial women? 
I think, I think the first is thinking back to those attributes. One is that sense of global connectedness. Two is rooting those communications, that content in purpose and truly understanding. And I, th and I think the third um, is really about celebrating individuality. This is a generation who are very, very conscious of um, self-expression and wanting to be seen as individuals. They lead very layered um, and textured lives and have identities online that they've crafted as individuals. Programs that homogenize young women's experience, that don't represent them, won't succeed. And that's why I refer to things like celebrating diversity, um, ensuring that you're using um, models that are representative so people can see themselves in the content. That's absolutely critical to making an impact with this generation. Now, you just recently completed a very um, interesting study on millennial women. Tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, we, we, we recently did an interesting study on, on motherhood um, and the road to motherhood. Um, obviously, millennial women um, as an age bracket, let's call sort of 18 to 35, um, a lot of them are young mums. Um, thinking about having babies. Uh, maybe they've had one and they're thinking about having another one. But I think what's interesting is that this isn't the straightforward path, perhaps, that it used to be. What we're seeing is that women are having a much more varied experience than ever before. It's not so much a career ladder, but a career roller coaster. They may move home with their parents in their 30s to save up to buy that flat. And it's not always the case that you get married and have a baby and that's the course that you take. Many women are choosing not to have children, um, focus on other things. The study really called upon that variety of experience and tried to unpack it to try and really truly understand how women felt um, about the road to motherhood and how they were marketed to um, by brands and also by traditional media in that context. I mean, given how um, many brands are out there and uh, a number in uh, this year's uh, Brands E Top 100 who sort of core target audience, um, is mums in one form or another. What would you say the three most important learnings uh, for those brand owners would be coming out of the study? I think absolutely the first is that um, women um, are really, really keen not to lose their sense of self as they enter motherhood. Um, we saw that 93% still want to be able to pursue their passions and interests after they become a mother. It isn't the only thing that defines them. The second thing is that while social media in particular has been a great source of information and community for mums, offering them interesting perspectives on how to raise their children perhaps, or the road to motherhood, um, they also more than ever feel the, fresh, the pressure to be perfect, to present a, um, a picture um, of perfection. And we all know that life isn't really like that. And in fact, what we heard a lot was that there are some um, social media portrayals of motherhood where you only show the bad stuff, but again, you've artfully decorated as your baby has thrown their supper all over you, which certainly isn't the, the, the case um, uh, in my house or many of my friends. Um, so I think understanding that social pressure is important. I think the third thing, and I think this is really, really important, is again in representation. Are there lots of different types of parenthood that are being represented today? How do working mums feel when all of the marketing is about mums who are staying at home? How do mums who are staying at home feel if their particular um, style of parenting isn't represented as positive or impactful? So the biggest single lesson, I think, is we have to represent women better. We have to talk to them more as individuals. Um, it's very, very hard to do with a mass media approach, but I think absolutely this core of individuality um, needs to be better represented in order to reach them. I was very surprised in the study uh, what a role model Claire Underwood was. Yes. Um, why? <laughs> Claire Underwood from uh, House of Cards as sort of uh, the, the number one pick of role models. Look, I think she's uncompromising. Um, she sort of goes for what she wants. She's not um, afraid to break out of boxes um, to challenge stereotypes, um, to challenge convention, um, perhaps not the obvious um, role model, um, but I think that those attributes of challenging inherited wisdom, of being seen as uncompromisingly oneself, 
speak to this trait of individuality that we really need to be focused on? Well, uh, it'd be interesting to see the new series, what is just just starting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be interesting to see uh, when, when I get to that binge watching uh, what her character uh, changes and develops in. Um, where can people get more information about Refinery29 from? Absolutely. It, really simple. Refinery29.com. Uh, if you want to go to our website, um, you can check us out on Snapchat, Snapchat um, our Discover channel, um, or, or on Facebook. Um, you know, if, if you enjoy it, sign up. We have a daily email that, that brings uh, all of our style and substance right there. So, so there's absolutely lots of ways to find us. And um, yeah, thank you very much for inviting us to be well, part of this. Craig, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you.